Hello everyone, this is Bradley. So today this is a tutorial talking about this abstract art that many people would like to know how to make it. This animation is essentially inspired from a Pinteresting animation. However, I think the original also was on Instagram and he called this kind of art as dimensionality. Anyway, this animation is kind of interesting, but it's also very tricky to make. There are also many different parameters, so it depends on how you tweak the settings to finally get something 100% the same as the original author. But anyway, let's start. So here we in Blender, let's uh, start with an object and an tree. As always, I'm going to use the preset which you can download for free from the link in the description. So firstly, I need to start with a curve circle, but I really do not need a curve. So let's just uh, curve two points. Okay. But I also do not need uh, this large size points, so I just uh, use a set points radius just to make it look kind of better, but it's really a uh, minor thing to do. And we're going to change the mode into evaluation so that we're using the resolution to actually control the, uh, the count. Okay. So right now, uh, briefly talking about the principle of what we're trying to do, is I'm going to emit this kind of particles to different direction. Okay. But generally speaking, they should uh, emit them to the opposite side. However, there is a one problem that you realize that they have different length of traveling, which means we actually need to build a wall to prevent them overshoot to outside the ring. Okay. In this case, we need to use the recast to limit their movement. Here, instead of directly showing you how recast will work in this case, I want to simulate basically the movement of our points. So let's just take a set of position and I'm going to use a uh, position node. Uh, the position node is by default already input into this position. So usually you do not need to add that, but I just want like, to show you uh, kind of movement that we're actually expecting. So in this vector mass, I'm going to use the scale negative. And let's take a negative. And if I add this into the offset, then everything has been converged into the center. However, if I manipulate this scale, then you can see how they actually move. Okay. So this is kind of an important part because uh, uh, originally our particles looks like this and by going with the negative value, they're shooting themselves to the opposite side. Okay. So this is basically going to be the direction while the position will be actually the source position. Okay. So this is how we're going to use this recast. So to really work with the recast, I'm going to use the point instance and I'm going to instance curve line because I do not only need the points to move, but I also need a, a trace uh, or the path being generated. Okay. So that there is a line following the kind of particle movement. Okay. So now we instance all these kind of lines. Uh, what I would like to do is to make the end points uh, follow the direction of our particles, which is shoot to the opposite sides by using the recast. Okay. So to manipulate these endpoints, we need to have a realize instance, and we also need an actual set position to affect these kind of endpoints. So we need to use the endpoint selection. Although there is no curve being mentioned within this node, however, this node actually only works for curves. So let's uh, take the end sides as one. So we are only affecting the end point and use the selection. So the next thing is really to define the position, which should be the kind of header position once we establish a proper recasting with, uh, uh, with a stopper mesh. To establish the stopper mesh, uh, basically we just use the initial curve circle and take a curve to mesh. And here I'm going to use the curve linear. So immediately what we see is a basically kind of mesh circle things, but it's simply because that we do not align them properly. So we finally end up something like a cylinder, which means that you can potentially use a cylinder to do the exactly the same thing. It's okay, completely okay. Depends on which you prefer. The only thing I do not really like is because here you can use the same radius to control, uh, to control everything procedurally, but in this case, you probably need another value node that's the 
that's the reason I do not like studying there. But probably it does not really change anything. Okay. So here we are just going to use this mesh as the target mesh. And previously we've already discussed the way of this kind of uh, point movement will be defined by this scale, vector scale. And I'm just going to reset that to negative one. The magnitude doesn't really matter, but it's just some personal preference. Okay. Uh, another thing I want you to remind you is previously I've mentioned this position is already in this source position. Okay. Uh, usually you do not change that, but in this particular case, uh, you need to change some values because if you visualize these two effects using the joint geometry, then you can see because they are basically coming from the same curved circle, so it's actually overlapping geometry, which means if you start a ray uh, from this position to whatever direction, the first uh, you will hit yourself immediately, right at the point you start a uh, ray. So in this case, to prevent this to happen, we need to again use this vector scale and just two times 0 0.99 to avoid it hits itself. Okay. So another thing is that if we directly plug this hit position into the position, then you will see something to happen, but it's kind of buggy. Okay. The reason is that we maybe have about six value there but because we have six to generate six splines, okay. six splines uh, with, contains two points, so it's the six times two, which contains essentially 12 points, okay? which means we will run out of value to transfer you, uh, upon this three casting. So when they run out of value, they will just go to the world origin. So this is kind of the buggy thing that you will actually experience. So we need to actually duplicate these values to 6 times 2 as well. Okay. The way we're going to do is to we make sure every instance will inherit a value and being passed, uh, being multiplied by 2 upon this realized instance. You do not really need to understand the me this mechanics because the, the actual solution is uh, very straightforward that you just capture attributes in the instance domain. So that upon realizing these attributes will be inherited to every point uh, from these instances. Okay. And then we plug this attribute into the position. Then we have everything being done correctly. Okay. So you can test with all these kind of settings uh, what will happen if we do not add this kind of a scale. So if I disable this scale, everything disappears. This is because these kind of lines, because they hit themselves at the starting point, they are too short to be seen. Okay. Uh, also, you can de uh, deal with this kind of uh, direction. If you make this kind of a scale at one, you do not see because they do not hit. Okay. So these are kind of the things that you will experience. Also, for about this endpoint selection, you will also having everything disappear because they will just both start the end and the end and will just come into the same position. Okay. So these are just the kind of things that you need to be cautious with when working with them. So next step is basically just to do the animation. Doing the animation is kind of a straightforward. You basically just use a trim curve. Okay. And by trimming that, you can actually see this kind of animation uh, is going on. Okay. Here, let's just add a delay for, which is basically generating a value from zero to one. And by playing this animation, you can see there is a delaying effect from splines to spline. Okay. The duration means how long time or how many frames it takes for you to go from zero to one. Okay. So let's set that to 80. The step interval is basically the delays from points to points. So let's just take that to high values. Then you can see there's a huge delay from this kind of points. Okay. Here, I'm going to duplicate this delay for and plug that to start. Immediately, we will lose everything because they are trim and start at the same time. But if I add some delay of this time, then what you can actually see is a kind of interesting animation. So let's increase the animation length. And let's play this animation, then you can see how it actually goes.
Uh, this is kind of too slow, so you can actually increase this kind of duration. Maybe take that to 50, uh, or actually 80. Or we're going to decrease this step interval, maybe to 2. Uh, finally, it's just a kind of parameter things that you can deal with by yourself. Okay. Uh, I think 80 is too high, so let's take that to 50. Okay. So we have this kind of animation. So we basically polish that uh, further with a bevel curve. And you can see these kind of lines are too thick. But we're going to set curve radius anyway. Because I want a kind of a thick end on a thick on one end and the thing on the other end. So here we just use a spline parameter. Because the factor is basically going 0 to 1 from one end of the spline to the other. So finally it looks like this. Uh, it's kind of too large, so let's use a mass node. And the multiply with the value to limit its uh, one end. So let's decrease it. Okay. So now if I play this animation, it looks like this. Okay. Uh, another thing I would like to do is we can basically point the instance on one end with an icosophere. This icosphere will be very huge because it's the size of one, but we can decrease that later. So let's just take a join geometry. This is too huge, so let's decrease the radius. So finally, we have things like this. Okay. Looks kind of uh, interesting. Okay. Of course, the original animation is not as simple as this. Uh, so we are going to do more kind of polishments on the movement themselves. One thing that I would like to discuss about the movement is that currently everything is having this kind of weird, uh, a more general delay. But uh, in the original animation that you will realize there is a segmentation, like uh, these four are a group, that four are a group, that four are a group. Okay, This is the segmentation, but here we do not see this segmentation. Okay. To do the segmentation, we need to delay things a little bit differently. It's basically a little bit difficult to explain, but it's basically a concept of conversion. Okay. So instead of counting the index from 0, and after 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, uh, to about 32, uh, I, will, I would like to count this index as uh, like this 4 group as 0, that 4 group as 1, that 4 group as 2, and that 4 group as maybe 3, 4. So basically divide this 32 into something smaller. Okay. So this is the concept of the index converge. Uh, this node was initially used for 3.0 for the for the instance attribute. Uh, it's very fortunate that I haven't deleted this node yet because it's kind of very useful in this particular case. So what we're going to do is since we are going to group everything as a group of four, so list length will be four and I'm going to untick this box so instead of loop at instance, it will loop at value, which is less than length, of 4. Okay. So we generate a new index, okay. and we are going to plug this new index into the custom index. So interestingly, you will see this here effect immediately. That uh, previously we see, we see every spline being delayed differently. But right now you can see these four are actually a group, that four are actually a group. We can make this animation more exaggerated, like increasing the step amount, so you can see it more clearly about how the group is being formed. Okay. So this is how we group them together. However, just having this kind of group is not enough because we also lose the interesting part of delaying within each group. Okay. So here there are several different ways of thinking, it's possible that you just add another delay for. So instead of just a delay within the group, we can add a delaying for within the group. Okay, It's possible, but it's not recommended because you can see this node is already very huge. It's not visually appealing to duplicate these kind of groups. So we're just going to use a more kind of a cheating method dealing with this delay. Previously, I've already showed you this kind of delay. It's more kind of a general delay to every point. But essentially, this is also a field or kind of a dash line, which means you can manipulate that differently. Okay. 
So here what we are going to do is I'm going to add a float range and I'm going to keep the original group index. So this is the new index is the group that we are forming. Okay. And I will plug this kind of value into the delay. So immediately you can actually see something is happening. And I do not want to kill this kind of uh, 15. So instead of directly plugging, I need to uh, do a mask just to add this 15 back. Okay. So now we have this kind of animation. We have a kind of individual delay within the group. And we also still have the group delay. But you also realize that there's something wrong with this kind of delay. So you always kind of splitting double. Okay. Because why they are having the same value, why these two are having the same value and so on. Okay. And this uh, if issue will be exaggerated if you try to turn that to maybe uh, 8 or 4 or a 6, something like that. You can always see these kind of weird patterns of doublets. The reason actually comes from uh, the concept of field that when we are working with this kind of geometry, the index will not be the same as the initial. So what we're trying to do here is I would like to capture actually, you can capture wherever you want, as long as it's kind of before we're doing the instance uh, in which we're creating doublets from this curve line, it will just be fine. So here what we're trying to do is, um, yeah, Let's just, uh, I would like to just uh, capture at the most the beginning in case there's any bad thing happening. So I'm going to capture the index, which is an integer. So I just uh, capture the index and then plug this index as a custom index. So we make sure that we are always dividing the most the initial index, uh, converging that into a group. So now if I'm generating this kind of value, then it's kind of nice. Just uh, to say that this float range node essentially is actually you might be rem you might be reminded by this group index. It's actually a cumulative field. So this is kind of idea. The only thing that I make these presets is because of this step mode. But uh, you you can play around these kind of values. Otherwise, you just use this step. But uh, this stop mode is very important. But I will discuss in the future. Okay. Not today. So now we have this animation being done. Then you can see this is going right. Okay. So we finished the delaying this kind of uh, particles and the lines, but we need to deal with the angle because now everything is just passing through the middle line. And you can actually also see that this kind of lines is hitting each other. So it's kind of something's not really interesting or something's not really appealing. Talking about the angles, uh, I want you to realize the angles are essentially defined by this redirection and we previously mentioned that this redirection is defined by this position uh, multiplied by negative one. Okay. If you would like to get a quick result, you can simply use the vector rotate and just rotate this angle then immediately you can see this kind of effect. The animation becomes a kind of completely different and much more refreshing once you rotate these angles. And you can definitely add uh, many things on the top of that. For example, uh, in the original animation, that you will realize that although they are in the same group, but some of the points will rotate to the right, some of them will go to the midline, some of them will be rotated to the left. Okay. However, in this case, since we're using a constant angle, they do not have such an exaggerated different rotation. So here I'm going to use the index converge because we're going to assign a different rotation within each group. So I need this new index to define the group. And within this float range node, I'm going to define the stop at zero. So the value that generates are always from zero to one, zero to one for each group. Okay. The reason I'm doing that is because I want to have a map range node so that I can remap a positive and a negative value. However, there's an issue that if I directly plug this result into the angle, then you can see they only rotate to a positive angle. There is, if you change to negative, there is nothing being changed. The reason uh, is basically because when you construct a preset which you use accumulated field node is working on the point domain. However, we actually capture this attribute in instance domain. So the value is not being generated very well within the accumulated node inside. Okay. So to do that, 
uh, to work around this kind of limitation of my preset. It's kind of very simple. That you just capture attribute in the point domain and reuse this new value. So immediately you will see kind of changes, so maybe a negative one, something like that. To make your life convenient, I'm going to use the negative so that it generates a negative value and a positive value with just the one click. Okay. So right now you have this animation being done already. Okay. Uh, another thing I would like to mention is that the center of rotation, it may not be very obvious, but uh, technically speaking, you should actually define the center as the center of their starting point. Uh, I will just do a kind of a shortcut, uh, which is basically just the uh, capture and another attribute within the vector, the position, so that I can use this position as the starting point for their rotation. And ideally speaking, the animation, mm, it may look uh, very similar, but it should be very kind of different. So you can play around with all these kind of settings, just to know that uh, if you change the settings, everything becomes very different. There are limited possibilities for you to deal with all these kind of things. For example, duration, step, interval, and so on and so forth. And also the stop value of this float range, which is responsible for delay. Okay. There is a final tweak I would like to make. Uh, is I realize there is a two points on a single spot, uh, which I do not really like. I realize this issue is because I forgot to add a endpoint selection to eliminate the starting point instance. Okay. So finally, we finish this animation. We can definitely do many things more. For example, scaling down this kind of um, icosphere once they reach the destination. But uh, I do not want to make this setup uh, much more complicated. While I think this tutorial is kind of already long. So I'm definitely only talking about a very basic concept. You can definitely polish that more, adding more capture, whatever stuff, uh, change the settings to make the animation much more interesting. But uh, if you would like to get a basic idea, I think I will just stop here. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.